No, Mr. it is very simple. Is. You have a, a lawyer mm -hmm. who paid a woman 10 years after the uh, alleged sex act, okay. right before an election, and he was reimbursed by your client. How is that not a prima facie case that the oh, grand it's clearly not. Won? It's clearly Why? not. Because I'll tell you what, there's two massive distinctions here in campaign finance law, which I've become sort of expert in. I've listed Bradley Smith, the former head of the FEC. One, unlike John Edwards, this was paid with personal funds. So there's a massive distinction there. Matter. Oh, it does. It because, doesn't matter. Yes, what there, was there's the a statutory intent of as, the payment. What was the intent of the payment? To prevent embarrassment to himself and his family. Even and, Michael Cohen said that under oath when he pled guilty. So you're saying that Michael Cohen paid uh, uh, the star, the porno star, whatever, so that Donald Trump wouldn't be embarrassed uh, to his family, and it just coincidentally happened a couple of weeks before the election. For he, 10 years, they weren't worried about it. She came forward when he was running for presidency. She didn't come forward for 10 years before. Some might call it extortion, but putting that aside, Reverend, listen to me. It has to be for it to be a campaign finance law violation. It has to be exclusively done for the campaign. If, if we if were in court, pay, I would ask, them, I would ask them to funds, read back Reverend, your statement. She Reverend, came forward pay, two weeks before the election, Reverend, which meant you, you were reacting to the election. No, it meant you were reacting to an, ex an extortion attempt to hide something that did or didn't happen. The president said it didn't happen. She said it did now before she said it didn't happen. This is Al Sharpton on MSNBC taking Trump attorney Joe Tacopina to task for his obvious lies and distortions in his defense of Trump's directed hush money payouts to Stormy Daniels one month before the 2016 election for an affair that happened a decade prior. But sure, it totally had nothing to do whatsoever with the election. Got it. Joe Takapina is twisting himself into knots here trying to justify how a payment that was clearly intended to shield Trump from bad press coverage while running in 2016 was just a total coincidence and not linked to the campaign in any way, shape, or form. Only, here's the first problem with this logic. The courts have already settled this. Michael Cohen was sentenced to prison in 2018 under the premise that the purpose of Cohen's hush money payments to Stormy Daniels was to influence the 2016 election. Therefore, the payments must be treated as campaign contributions, which are subject to strict regulation under federal election law. It was ruled that Michael Cohen's $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels exceeded the $2,700 contribution limit, and if Trump knew about this at the time, which we all know he did despite his lies, then he too is guilty of this crime. So for Joe Takapina to make this argument when it was already litigated five years ago is as pathetic as it is inaccurate. And of course Joe Takapina knows this, and we know he knows this, because he admitted his own current client's guilt on live television back in 2018. No one who's here is going, oh my God, I can't believe this. I've said all along, if he had just come out and said, yeah, I did, so what? And just chalk that up to another one of the, the things on his, his list of minor scandals he gets through. Right. She's gone to great detail about her one night stand with him. What else can she say? There's nothing else to tell. This could be looked at as, as an in-kind contribution at the time of the election. This is a real problem. I guess one drawback to Trump choosing his lawyers from TV is that those lawyers probably criticized him on TV. But in case you thought this was the end of Trump's lawyer being humiliated by Al Sharpton in this segment, it actually got worse for him. I'm not here to defend all things Donald Trump. I'm here to defend this case. Okay, Donald Trump is Donald well, Trump. He's as aggressive as he is. Does he have an obligation to denounce the rhetoric and what has happened to Donald, to, well, to Alvin Bragg. If, we had a prayer rally for Alvin Bragg oh, this morning. This man and his what family someone sent, could be under what serious someone threat. someone sent to Alan Bragg has nothing to do with Donald How Trump. How do you know that? Because Donald Trump would have nothing to do with that. Donald happening. Trump wrote death and destruction no, no, if I'm that, indicted. However he announced that he was going, going to be point. indicted Tuesday. Mm -hmm. he well, that is, came from leaks. That came from leaks. He, he posed was with a bat. No, he didn't. No, no, no. So let me explain wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. Just a minute. He, there was a picture with a bat mm -hmm. that someone had put together right, that someone. he reposted. Did okay. he not? So how Well, the witness answered the question. The witness is about to answer the question. Did he repost However ill-advised that post was, reposting that, he reposted Does an article. Does that mean that you he reposted stipulate it. he did repost it? Well, apparently he reposted but I also know he took it down when he realized what was in that photo. Oh, he was I reposting see. an article, but he did take so it down. So I stabbed you in the back, but I took the knife out. Before the knife did any damage. 
to be for the damage. Reverend, so Reverend, if you Reverend, are Alvin Reverend, Bragg's Reverend, family realized, and on, you on, see on. a repost by was, the former listen. president of the United States with a bat next to your father's that, but head. But you understand that was not his photo. It was in, in an he article. He reposted it. it was in, but he was reposting the, the headline of the article without seeing the picture. When he saw the picture, oh, when so, he was notified, he took it down. So you're telling the American public that Donald Trump didn't see the picture? I'm telling the American public, I'm here to discuss the case and the facts. Social media is not what I do. I'm not a PR person for Donald Trump. I'm here to litigate the case. There is no crime in this case. And so I can understand why he's becoming upset. He is becoming politically persecuted. Ah, don't worry. Trump may have stabbed you, but as Takapina says, he pulled out the knife before it did any damage because that's how stabbings work. Now, this line of questioning by Al Sharpton is in reference to the recent news that a Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, received an envelope with a suspicious white powder along with the death threat. And this happened just hours after Trump posted on Truth Social suggesting that there may be death and destruction if he's indicted. But hey, let's not go crazy and claim that Trump wanted this violence. That would be irresponsible. It's telling, too, that Takapina barely even tries to defend his own client's behavior here, going so far as to say that it's not his job to do so. Only, here's the problem with that. You can't detach Trump's own behavior from the crimes that he commits. The unhinged posts on True Social, the incitement to his own supporters, all of this is just a continuation of the crime spree itself. This is the entire point of charges like obstruction of justice. If you try to interfere in the investigation by attacking the investigators, you're only continuing to perpetuate the criminal activity. And if there was any question that his rhetoric is continuing to escalate, here's Trump and his supporters at his rally in Waco, Texas over the weekend with their hands over their hearts as they play their pro-January 6th insurrection anthem called Justice For All, while the screens around them play footage of insurrectionists storming the Capitol and beating police officers. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and place your hand over your heart for the number one song on iTunes, Amazon, and the Billboard chart. Justice for All, featuring President Donald J. Trump and the J6 Choir. Ah, so first January 6th was a false flag operation by Antifa, then it was just a peaceful tourist visit, and now they've just given up all pretense and are embracing the violence altogether and replacing their anthem with it. Yeah, I know, that sounds about right. But I should note one thing. Takapina inadvertently revealed the very foundation of Trump's entire defense here when he says this. There is no crime in this case, and so I can understand why he's becoming upset. He is becoming politically persecuted. Politically persecuted. Donald Trump views himself as the victim here. The guy who committed the campaign finance violations thinks that he's the one who deserves pity. The guy who tried to overthrow the last election. The guy who asked the Georgia Secretary of State to find non-existent votes. The guy who incited his supporters to violence on January 6th. The guy who's inciting his supporters to violence again in New York. Apparently, the more crimes that Trump commits, the more you should feel sorry for him. In a way, this is the perfect microcosm for the GOP these days. They impose their extremist behavior onto everyone else and then turn around and cry that they're the victims. Over and over from abortion bans to insurrections. Just a perpetual state of complaining from people who are either incapable or unwilling to take responsibility for their own actions. And look, I've said this before, but it bears repeating. These are the consequences when you don't have swift justice. When there's no accountability, criminals only get emboldened. There's never going to be some magical moment where Trump just decides he should stop inciting his supporters to violence. He's never going to change. There's no new tone. This is who he is. The only solution here is judicial accountability. And for the sake of our democracy and this country, let's hope the prosecutors in Trump's multiple ongoing investigations keep this at the top of mind. Before you go, a quick announcement. I've started a Spanish YouTube channel. Democrats desperately need to be able to appeal to Spanish-speaking audiences, so this is me doing my part. To help that channel get going in the algorithm so that we can finally start spreading our progressive message and breaking the conservative stranglehold on Spanish-speaking media, please subscribe and watch a few videos. The link to that channel, called Brian Teller Cohen Espanol, is right here on this screen. And of course, to see more of my content in English, make sure to subscribe to this channel as well. The link is also right here on this screen. Thanks so much for watching.